So Dr. Dinesh had sent me his presentation. The best would have been, you know, nobody can replace DT the way he explains, uh, but uh, I will do whatever justice I can. So, so Dr. Dinesh was presenting on role of anti-VEGFs in diabetic macular edema and proliferative diabetic uh, maculopathy. There are 11 take-home messages. So this is what we know that there is NPDL, maculopathy and proliferative diabetic retinopathy and the approach to the patient is that if we do not have a retinopathy or an early NPDL, we must do a medical treatment. If you have a diabetic maculopathy, PDR, we have to treat these patients medically by intravitreal injections. All these patients must be controlled metabolically well. We must give anti of injections and we must treat them surgically wherever required. So the message number one is it should be a multi-pronged attack. We must change the internal milieu of the patient. That means we must control them by good metabolic control, a good lipid control. And so they basically this means you have to have target, target values. And it's generally the, the uh, American Diabetic Association has given very low values for HPA1C, but generally we say it should be below seven. They say the target value of 6.1. But that sometimes patient gets uh, hypoglycemic attacks and then we must control hypertension, nephropathy and we must control the uh, lipid profile, especially the LDL. In a diabetic macular edema, it's important to identify whether it is a centered involving or a non-centered involving diabetic macular edema. A centered involving diabetic macular edema must be treated by anti vegfs And how do we know that? If it is between... According to what ETDRS says, 500 to 3000 micron. Dr. Dinesh believes it should be from 750 to 3000 micron. So if it is from 750 to 3000 micron, you can do it with focal laser. If it is within 750 micron, one must treat with anti A Lot of uh, protocols have, been, uh, have come up with the DRCA.net. And protocol T basically tells us that once we give, it was comparison of aflibercept, ranibercept, and bevacizumab, which showed that during the initial treatment, there was a dramatic response with all three drugs, maximum with aflibercept. But over the period of two years, the response of ranibercept and aflibercept came closer, but there was a statistical difference when they were compared with bevacizumab. It also showed that patients who had a visual acuity of less than 20 by 40, the benefit was much higher with aflibercept. So the take home message is, if you have a patient with a vision of less than 20 by 40, the choice of agent is aflibercept. But patients who have a better vision than 20 by 40, you can use any agent. If the patient cannot afford anything, I think Avastin still is a good, uh, good option. And I think it should, be, it should be done. You should not allow the patient not to have any injections. It was also shown that uh, patients who ha are, uh, have a good prognosis are the patients who respond within the first two or three injections. Many times they may not need a third injection or a fourth injection. Therefore, you must try the initial loading doses. And if the patient responds and does not need third injection, that can be avoided. That's what Dr. Dinesh is suggesting. And those who do not need injection at month three and month four are generally a better responders. Now, protocol T also associates the reduction of central soft field thickness and it's been shown that the maximum response again occurs with aflibercept and minimal and uh, the bevacizumab is least effective. But please understand, be, uh, an intravitreal injection of bevacizumab is always better than no injection at all. So you must continue anti vegfs if you see continued improvement. And if patient is not responding, the alternative is if you were an avastin, you could shift to another anti vegf agent. Or if you find the inflammatory biomarkers like cystoid spaces, hyperreflective dots, a neurosensory detachment, then you shift to steroids. And then patients with a distant visual acuity of better than 20 by 40, or patient has a visual acuity of n by 8, is better. Uh, that you must also add nipafenic drops, control them medica medically, and it is also possible that you can monitor these patients, and if the patients are deteriorating, then you can initiate anti-VEGF injections, which has been again shown by protocol V. 
decrease of near vision or decrease in distant vision both are indicators for the anti vegf injections now with regards to the proliferative diabetic retinopathy it has been shown that anti vegfs work well but please understand a pan retinal photocoagulation gives a permanency to the treatment of course there is a loss of field but it's been shown that that with anti vegfs also on a five year follow up which is quite dramatic that even with anti vegf injections you can have a loss of field so uh, the role of anti vegf agents in the treatment of proliferative di diabetic retinopathy is we normally use it before surgery it helps us do the surgical interventions better peel of the membranes better and combining the two is possibly the best approach so ladies and gentlemen judicious use of anti vegf agents as part of the multi pronged attack and definitely help to preserve and improve visual function i hope i have done justice to what the dr dinesh had to say and uh, thank you all very much uh thank you should we have discussion immediately or uh, one or two questions uh, yeah whatever i as what i wrote in the beginning we should have interaction interaction it's very difficult or that is you should be on the side of the side of the side can you please put it on also any questions also one or two from the audience we can take so i don't use saptinon steroid anymore i use no, only you use saptinon no no actually uh, since intravitreal is so i mean we are used to it we are not using the saptinon that frequently yeah because if we look at the amount the dosage which is given a saptinon injection you generally inject about 0.75 ml 0.75 ml is almost about 15 mg and uh, uh, Yeah, one yeah. M, one ml, uh, one ml, one ml or point five ml. Yeah, yeah. So you give point point five to point seven five ml. Intravitreal, you give point one, which is four milligrams. I use supracradial, so it's different. There, the problems don't come up. Yeah, doctor. Yeah, I just want to point out that maybe cytokine is there's a haste entry. Then probably supplements are right because that we didn't get into what we talked about. So, sir, there's a clear. No, no. What he was trying to say, if there is a if there is a flat NV, you could laser it before. If there is a raised NV, it's important. Yeah, yeah. So with the macular edema, I I do not know what your choice is. I generally give an anti VEGF, and then we go ahead surgically. Yeah. Correct. 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 Correct.